All right, thank you very much. Um, I am, to some degree, very privileged to come after the last speaker, uh, Professor Valentina uh, Balash, um, because she sort of laid the foundation for my talk. Um, but I was almost intimidated not to come to this conference because we were being restricted to a five minute presentation. So I was just going to say, by the time I said I knew Professor Zada, five minutes is gone. So um, but she gave the background to what most of us who followed Zada uh, knew with regards to his humanity. I, I thought that I was going to keep my speech to a non-technical um, presentation. I might still do that because I wanted to talk about this very unique human being that I, I had the privilege of meeting at USC in 1966. I had just been seduced back from, from Columbia to USC by Professor Richard Bellman to work on life scale systems, particularly in the healthcare area in uh, um, medicine and looking at computer area tools. And after I had just passed my exam, my qualifying exam in 66, Dick Bellman invited Lot Zada to USC to give a series of seminars. And when he talked about fuzzy sets, fuzzy systems, very fascinating indeed. And, um, you know, I would say a few things. I saw the pictures you took with, um, with, with him, and it reminded me of so many pictures that uh, Professor Zada took of me and our friends, our colleagues in the fuzzy field many, many times. Um, a great human being and an apostle of um, the technology that uh, he invented to transform um, our, the state of art of uh, modeling and control. You know. The other aspect of your talk that brought out great memories for me was that um, after I got the privilege of meeting Zada, I was already committed to looking at stochastic control dynamic programming and stochastic control, and applications to the healthcare sectors. So as interesting and fascinating as the topic of fuzzy set was, I could not veer away from my thesis topic. You know, otherwise, I was tempted to do that. But also, at that time, it would have been sacrilegious because the people to look at fuzzy sets upon your doctoral thesis. As was later on to communicated to me, Enrique Ruspini uh, they worked with Zada and wrote in his PhD thesis on fuzzy logic and fuzzy sets, and he cut hell at that time. So, you know, so anyway, I was committed to, to my thesis topic. But, after my doctorate in 68, I went to, to Case Western Reserve, the Operations Research Department, and um, they wanted me because of the dynamic programming aspect of my background, having worked with Bellman. And so the first real world project I was involved with had to deal with using dynamic programming in resource allocation for the military, a problem of uh, great interest, but it was so high dimensional that we were looking for 
than strategies to minimize the curse of dimensionality. As I was exploring alternative approaches to doing that, I reached back and remembered the seminar that Lotfi gave in 1966 at USC. And so I started exploring my interest in fuzzy set then was to use it as a vehicle for reducing dimensionality, the curse of dimensionality in dynamic programming. In the process, in the process, we developed an algorithm. We developed an algorithm based on dynamic programming and fuzzy sets. And it was a paper that I wrote with my graduate student in 1970 called, um, well, this, this talks about the capsulization of uh, Zada's um, creation, fuzzy sets, highly quoted paper. And then the next one that really talked about its application to real world uh, systems and to decision making for the sec that second paper and published in the IAAA transactions. So my paper then was, so we were looking at USC over there, same as at USC and so on, this one. So the question then was for me at case was could we have a way of marrying dynamic programming with fuzzy sets? So that one, you can practicalize fuzzy sets to its advantage, and then you can extend the range of applications of dynamic programming from theoretical domains to the real world. And what we did then was that paper, that first paper with Ramesh, Dynamic Programming and Fuzzy Allocation Processes. A technical memo that was published there as part and parcel of the research funding with the, with the Army Material Command. But little did I know that other research entities around the world had access to our work and that, you know, but what happened was Negoeta from Romania wrote me, you know, and of course I, I, I met, subsequently met Ralescu and all of them, you know. A group, a research group in Romania had access to this and we we're applying it to their resource allocation problems in one of the economic research and development entities, and they said that, well, they were part and parcel of uh, the uh, Soviet Union then, in terms of uh, the communist ideologies and so on. So it was something that had appealed to them, and they were using it. And from inviting me to a talk on cybernetics, at, um, uh, Society, and I think your president, uh, Nikolai Ralisko, you know, was also um, a systems uh, professor then. So I was invited to Bucharest, uh, to a world conference in, in, in August of 75, to talk about this, this paper, this dynamic programming and fuzzy allocation process. The characteristic of that paper was that it was practical in nature. We were trying to implement, remember that it was impelled by a real world research project facing the military. We were being funded on the needed results. So we focused on implementation, computer aided implementation. So it was a lot of algorithms, flowcharts and so on, geared to the computer and so on. It was practical indeed. I discussed that. And that opened the vial for me in terms of uh, work in this area. But I found 
that it had appeal, and somebody else who actually was trying to use it, my interest was all the more uh, taken to the roof. You know, initially, I was just doing it because it was something I had to do. But when I found that it had real utility, I was encouraged to do more work in it. So that application was for the military. One of my areas, in fact, principal areas of application have been in the healthcare field because that's what Bellman wanted me to do. Bellman was leaving the RAND Corporation at the same time. I, you know, I mean, to go to USC with a triple professorship, professor of mathematics, professor of electrical engineering, and professor of medicine. And he wanted me, as part of my funding, for my doctorate to apply my, I was interested in large scale systems, even though initially, because as Columbia was looking at replacement and maintenance problems, you know, um, equipment for developing countries. So I started looking at healthcare applications, but I found that it's also a typical example of large scale systems. So the next thing I thought was to apply to the healthcare field. And I started looking at similar problems ar ar arising there. And I said, what is the fuzzy problem in there? And I started looking at uh, resource allocation problems for cancer research. And then, um, so I transferred the domain of application to cancer research appropriation process. It's an atypical problem, unlike space allocation systems, where Kennedy challenged the US, he said by year, the end of the, of the decade, that US should land um, uh, somebody, person uh, in, in the moon. Online, and that was not the case for cancer research. The allocation process, the results of research were very unpredictable. And it's not just, and a number of aspects of it were not just probability based, they were indeed fuzzy. And so uh, my application here was in the cancer research area. What I want to do is to quickly um, talk about, my, use my work as a vehicle for illustrating, you know, Zada's contribution one, to you know, um, my career as it turned out, but also to still continue to, to point to his unique humanity. Bellman opened, started in the first place. When I was at Columbia and I read Bellman's papers in dynamic programming, our concept was here was this descendant, Russian Jew, with a long mathematician, brilliant man with long beard, grade, sitting in one corner, and only thought about mathematics and so on. But he completely, he blew me away. But his, I mean, he had parties, and he would invite you, you know, invite graduate student to his party. I mean, he broke my concept of the distance between the professor and the student in the first place. And he said, knowing that I was, I'm from Africa, Nigeria, he said, I will turn you into the real Albert Schweitzer of Africa. Because so you will learn the problems facing healthcare delivery, but you can then try to solve it scientifically and so on and so forth. But he invited, so he showed me that he was a human being. And I also saw that he was frequently traveling the world, giving lectures and consulting, pushing the, the field that he developed, the dynamic program. You could see that he wrote so many papers and so many books. And you know, he thought about dynamic programming as a, a ubiquitous tool that could solve any problem 
the linear programming so and so on, you will see a dynamic programming counterpart. And it's part of the reason why it was so many books. The same thing ha started happening when uh, we met, met uh, Zada. And found that he was also, unlike my classical concept of a typical uh, prof a brilliant professor, my first degree was in electrical engineering minor mathematics. He was a professor of electrical engineering, uh, familiar with his book, uh, Linear Systems Theory with the you know. And yet, he sort of veered a way to develop fuzzy search in an attempt to deal with challenging real world problems. You know. But the similarity between him and, and, and uh, and uh, Bellman, apart from being geniuses, was their, their likeness for human beings and dealing with social problems. And so when I started going to, to conferences around being led by Zada, I saw the man not just coming to give a le lecture give a plenary talk and disappearing, he was actually a participant. He would sit down and listen to other people's lectures and make suggestions to you. I mean, I don't want to, to tear up now because he really again blew me away. You know? We followed him, for example, to conferences in China at the point in time when China was being challenged by the rest of the world and people were saying that they may not be able to feed their people. You know. So we saw China in its infancy and move away from the antiquated way of, of living to serious effort to tackle their, their challenges. We saw them giving lectures coming to conferences on fuzzy sets that we were talking about, and putting old cycle style, they write a paper of 25 pages, they will do each page and read every line, okay, and so on and so forth. So those things, are, you know, it was not just academics. We learned about the culture and learned about transformation you know, you know, of, of life, you know. By the time we came back the following year, you know, it was a completely different world. They were no longer just using it. They came up and then developed all the systems and changed their, the life of their people and so on. So we mentored them. Initially, when we would go to those conferences, they would sit in one corner, almost like a, a, an appetite Africa then in those days. They could not mix with us Lord Fizada insisted that we all come together. He said, that is the essence of, of the, you know. So, um, okay, thank you. So, but anyway, so I, I, we began looking at this. But you see, you know, uh, people do that. And then, so I developed the culture of mentoring, which transformed my life in the process and transformed the lives of other people. At Georgia Tech, not only did I do research, but I also saw that I was the only black professor at Georgia Tech. And so I reached back with opposition to get minorities to get interested in this field and mentor them also. Because I was mentored by Bellman, I was mentored by Zada, you know, and I started marrying tools. The hybridization, Bellman tends to call it a wedding on te of techniques to solve large-scale challenging problems. That I did reasonably well at Georgia Tech, even in the face of challenges like that, was because I wedded techniques. When one area, one area dried up, I would look at the bag of tricks and combine them. I did that even in the fuzzy system area. One of the largest tools, well, that I, that the technique in, 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 
fuzzy adaptive, neural fuzzy adaptive control. Because I marry fuzzy logic with neural networks, with dynamic programming, you know, to, co to come up with an intelligent controller. Even when some of my colleagues were scoffing at was it was fuzzy, you know, fuzziness. Some of this is, is you know, I mean, they, they harassed Zada. So who am I to, you know, not to worry? Yeah, so, you know, but you know, Bellman mentored Zada, but Zada mentored also Bellman in this. So but those two were a great giants that worked together to produce valuable results uh, for the world. And okay, I'm, I'm not going to, go, but as I said, one of the greatest things that happened to me, but also not only did I get NSF grants for intelligent, new intelligent controller, uh, marrying these tools, but that I applied it to power system stabilization problem that EPRI funded, and then to develop autonomous uh, uh, controller for NASA, which was part of the reason behind their appointing me when the space shuttle disintegrated upon reentry in 2003 you know, to the NASA board, you know, to look at problems from a holistic, larger safety system embedded point of view. And I'm going to stop here because uh, I see um, efforts trying to, to, yes, I have one minute, so I can say my name, really. Huh? Sorry? All right, thank you so much. All right, so um, I will just quickly, just like uh, uh, Professor, I will show some pictures with, with Lati. I mean, those of you, uh, in fact, I was concerned because every conference we went to, he would take my picture. I said, what is this man? I hope he's not working with CIA or something. But he took a lot of my pictures. I didn't see them, but some of them. This was at the Bellman Continuum which he helped us after Bellman died to come together and stay together. And uh, uh, he, he, you see, he helped us to even form some of our topics so they were not just restricted to dynamic programming, but marriages of all the different things, intelligent control, and so on and so forth. And there should be one more, okay, but anyway, thank you so much. So I want to thank uh, uh, Professor Chan. Shabna, I, I can never Shabnas. say Shabna. Shabnas. Shabnas. Uh -huh. For making it possible, I would have killed myself if I didn't have any role to honor um, a man who was. He actually helped me to come to Berkeley as Chancellor's Distinguished Professor in, in 1988. That was the kind of man that we're honoring today that you guys all know. I'm sure you can each one of you tell their own stories about how great this man is. So may his soul rest in perfect peace. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.